Ben. <laughs> Folks, it's just a Halloween mask of Saddam Hussein. Welcome. It's a tough crowd. Uh, I remember Halloween, and uh, my parents were cool about it, actually, because when I look back on it, they let you help do the Halloween costume, but they didn't make a big project out of it, you know? They knew it was like a formality, the costume. The idea was to get the candy, you know? But you always had the, some people on the block that had to push it, you know? Some lady to open the door. Who are you supposed to be? I was the spokesman, of course. I was like, I'm a bum. My sister's a ballerina or a fairy. My brother's a, 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 a pirate, you know? It's like, oh, is he Captain Hook? Just a generic pirate, miss. I, why don't you just throw a couple of Three Musketeers in there? We'll be on our way. Oh, is she a good fairy? No, she's a, a fairy that pretends to sprinkle moon dust in people's eyes, but it's really battery acid. Of course she's good. <laughs> you know of any evil fairies? You know the old bats, you know? But Halloween's good, because you know how it is. They, it teaches you, really, if you want to get ahead in the world, you dress up for people, kiss a little ass, be who people want you to be, and then people give you stuff, you know? It teaches you to be a whore. <laughs> Hey, hey guys, I'm not a crowd pleaser. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, wow. All right. Start out at that level. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, man. Dennis Kozlowski spent $2 million on this party. Take a look at this party this guy had. <laughs> what? That was a mistake. That was actually from Jim David's First Communion. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Obviously, this guy should be killed for embezzling the money. But what about the fact that it's legal? Like, this kind of stuff is legal to have this kind of party where you're paying for every lap dance and half a gram any corporate guy's had for the past 20 years. Dom? Oh, what's, what, what, what's wrong with a lap dance? I'm a supporter of the arts, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Did that look like a fun party or what? Huh? Yeah, with the, oh, yeah, nothing yeah, makes with you want to go to a party like that. <laughs> Running around a pool, I can't stop laughing. I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, it did look like kind of a dud of an event. You know? yeah, I mean, if they spent all that money, that, that just people going, woo, with wings. That's it. That's what you would that's do. It? If you had millions of dollars, I would stand there going, <laughs> <laughs> while people. That's why did, I get that. Jimmy underwear. Buffett playing now at the Buffett party? played at the party. That's the crime. Wow. $2 million and you hire that guy? Couldn't just spend <laughs> Couldn't you spend the money? But I mean, if I was a shareholder in the corporation and they had spent money on like you two, on, you know, really hot hookers that cost a lot of money to have sex with each other, they had mirrors full of blow and heroin and, you know, the, you, you know then you know, you'd say like, that's wrong, perfect. but I'm proud to be part of that company. Right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Right. No, I'll forgive them because they had you too. Why does everything have a gay theme too? Whenever anyone gets a lot of money, immediately there's a gay element. Bring in the gay people. What, what are you talking about? Was there gay? I didn't yeah, know. Was, the whole thing was I'm kind kidding, of kidding. Kidding. oiled, oiled Tunisian boys. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was in Sardinia too. Yeah, yeah. Sardinia. That's New York people, Tom. They are white people. The sardines. Handless <laughs> sardines. Smell this. Yeah. yeah why do I got to put the Italians down like that? I don't Stereotypical. Know. Why? It makes like me like that? Well, I mean, the Italians are decadent, Sodom and Gomorrah. It makes you want to just get a guy and just break their legs, you know what I mean? <laughs> just knock off their knees. Break a stereotype. Yeah. But is anyone really upset by that? I mean, I save my anger for, you know, child abuse and things like that when animals get hurt. I don't really care if some CEO rips off Yeah, I mean, when you, I, people, I think, kind of, that's... Well, people count on that. When you buy a little Tyco race car, you want to know that some guy is getting a Hummer because you bought that. Because <laughs> you and think it's... that could be you someday. That's what America's all about, you know. It yeah. is. And that's such a kind thought about Thank child you. abuse. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, who's for child abuse? <laughs> I'm against child abuse. Not me. I like to beat a little kid once in a while. <laughs> Make him cry. <laughs> well, I was about to say something serious, and I was like, oh, no, it's a comedy show. I shut up. All right. Saudi Arabia has spent 17 points. I'll tell you what I say my anger for. This guy. Oh, you killed my son. <laughs> Saddam Hussein is a mask. Saddam. <laughs> Saudi Arabia has spent $17.6 million after 9-11 to improve their image with Americans. Look at this ad. A partner in investigating more than 150 suspected terrorist accounts and a force for stabilizing oil prices during this time of war. Next, I'll have Jared eating a falafel. Kenny, <laughs> let me ask you something. What the hell is that? Kenny, oh, what is the point of this, please? Well, I think if Saudi Arabia really wants to get back on our good graces, uh, I mean, since 15 of the hijackers were Saudi, 
They knock the towers down. If they want to play nicey-nicey, build the towers back up with all their oil money. But this time, we're going to want three. So uh, <laughs> that's the I only like way. I like on the ad how it says the American flag and then their flag kind of trying to, you know, it's the same flag. Don't worry. You see, which sort of which, like, yeah, you which forgot, flag? You, you didn't show the whole commercial. It just goes to black and it says, enjoy oil. That's just really <laughs> Now listen to this. This is a subject I proudly picked. Cause marketing, mm -hmm. combining selling of products with like things that people like, like Ben and Jerry's always did it. They, yeah. I don't know what their causes are now. Mrs. Fields is involved in stuff. I think there's like Victoria's Secret is doing breast cancer awareness month. I don't know, but something like that is happening. What do you guys think about this? Uh, is this cynical or is it a positive way to equally distribute the wealth, Mark? Well, at least they're sort of, you know, subverting the cause, you know, underneath the product. At least it's not like right to life cereal. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I think that ultimately what, what happens is leave it to Americans to you know make people feel better about what they're doing by buying things. You know, I think it's only going to let people rationalize their behavior. Like you see the obese guy knocking back a second pint of chunky monkey saying, hey, it's for a good cause. And, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then he gets diabetes, they cut his fingers off, and the Domino Sugar Fund pays for it to get the surgery. Uh -huh. see, and the guilt just keeps trickling up until it's Satan goes, oh. you lose. You see, that's... <laughs> Do any of you right. guys actually, does a cause ever make you buy something or not buy? And I'm a big Ben and Jerry's eater. And I eat it not because they're against bovine growth hormones, but because they have big chunks of stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, if Ted Nugent had ice cream with big chunks of stuff in it, I'd eat his ice cream. Would you really? Yeah. You I don't, eat politically, Ted I don't chunks? care. I yeah. just like the big hey, chunks. Hey, Ken. Yeah, go ahead. No, not for nothing. Maybe you ought to switch to like a low fat yogurt. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just saying, Listen as somebody who cares about your heart. Man, I like. I only eat half because Jerry's a jerk. Off. Jerry's a jerk. <laughs> Jerry's a I don't know how, it. but yeah. Well, you know, this whole thing is sort of like. Uh, it, it's like Indian casinos, you know, it's the same sort of idea. Because, like, you know, I don't gamble yeah, much, how but I'll, I'll tell you how it's like okay. that. I'll gamble at an Indian casino. <laughs> I'll tell you, because it's like a cause. I'll gamble at an Indian casino. Because, you know, yeah. when you lose, you feel like you're helping. You know, <laughs> That's why I get Indian hookers. Yeah, yeah it's see? <laughs> see? They You're got that the $20 foot from Manhattan back and the first two hands of pie got poker. Yeah. <laughs> Enough. Yeah, no, I think uh, whatever <laughs> good. What is Mrs. Fields helping? She's what helping a lot of good causes. You don't have to be so about all. Mrs. Fields. <laughs> yeah, I forget. I, I read the thing, but I forgot what it said. That would be good if they, if they could just say that. that. Just yeah. It's good causes. Just go ahead. She, she, she has like, what is it? What specifically? It's just good. Don't worry. No, We're doing she's giving nice. millions and millions of dollars. To somebody. To homeless AIDS victims. Is that right? To no, I don't know, but something good. I won't, <laughs> homeless I won't buy cigarettes because of their affiliation with death. You know, I won't buy them. <laughs> <laughs> but death could be a good cause. We're going to talk about it in the next act. He segued. Yeah. It's the first Perfect. time I ever made a segue that was almost like semi-intelligent, no, smooth. Professional. But then right. it threw it away by out. mentioning that it was No, no, I think that enhanced it. What is it? Uh, we'll be right back. How's that for a cool ending? I read in this month's Details magazine that men are trying to get in touch with their masculinity by going out and pretending to be knights and mountain men. I mean, I thought that was over like 10 years ago, but, uh, you know, you want to be a man, hold the door for some lady, give up your seat, stupid, you know, say excuse my French when you curse like they used it back in the 40s, you know, <laughs> block your hat, tip your hat. It's ridiculous. What do you think about this? Is this like, uh, isn't this just a bunch of schizos? Trying to blame their personal lack of balls on the biatches, Lewis? Yeah. <laughs> the biatches. Yeah, no, more or less. I mean, uh, men always act like it's complicated to being a man. You have to figure out how to be a man. You just walk around, you put the penis in the vagina, and that's it. I mean, that's, no. that's what it is to be a man. It's not no. very complicated. But I think uh, it's not really, uh, it's, a, it's not true to say that now they're doing this medieval night stuff because of women. Uh, what I mean is that they were doing it for the same reason back then. I think when it was King Arthur and those guys, they were also were just trying to go, oh, leave me alone, woman, I am strong and mighty with a sword. Because right. their women were driving them crazy because they didn't, because women are, 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 are the stronger sex, so men are so, we just feel shriveled next to them. So how's, we have to pump how's the marriage going, Louis? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but this our fault. Is, the assumption fault, is always is that, the, that these guys, like, who's to say that there weren't knights that are like, put you, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why, why do I always assume that hey, they're like, I'm telling you. The knights were put Man. Lancelot put I'm telling you. I write it back. 
And, uh, and I don't know what, what mountain man. What is that? That that's not. I, like, how is that a manly archetype? That's a lonely guy. hermit. Why don't they yeah. call it what it mountain is? A guy who lives in a cave. A hermit. But that's but. what it's always been: is guys that are just depressed and they don't, can't understand their women, so they go outside and they pump up and. Like yeah. Arnold, you know, I'm not afraid of women. Hey, no. He's my governor, watch it. <laughs> but this is a pathetic time to be a man. You, if you turn to the sports page, every third ad is for erectile dysfunction or balding. I think men <laughs> should take back the limp penis and our bald heads no, and embrace not. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you always saw the Viagra ad during the Yankees in the World Series. Don't, and don't get me started on Viagra. That is, that's a win. No, I, I have a friend who is, I'm, I'm sort of balding, and no. uh, I'm really balding. No. Uh, but I have a friend who uh, who is really obsessed, and he goes and he buys drugs from like African on, uh, internet companies, and he cuts them himself, and, and he's trying to get me on this thing, and you, you can do it, you can grow your hair back. And I said, well, isn't there some impotence uh, something? And he goes, yay, <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to play with you? Does it make your penis shrivel? Yeah, but it's not, you know, shrivel. At the, end, at the end, your d your d just kind of goes. <laughs> it splats. <laughs> I, I think that yeah, if you're really if you're really wondering what kind of man you are, the only way to really figure it out is to take a couple minutes and just you know ask yourself, all right, who would I be in prison? You know, and be honest. You know, yeah, you're gonna be the guy. It's like, oh. okay, I'll wear it. Don't hurt me. You know, you're gonna be that guy, or that's you're gonna be the guy. It's like, shut up, so, take it, be a bitch see, like a man, take it. That's a good. I don't, I don't think I'm that. Yeah, much but there are shades within thing. that too, because I worry about that. Because if I like, no, if, I, if I go to prison and some guy makes me, on him, I'm gonna do it. I'd wear his hat. I am because I don't want to die or even hurt really. But then you got to ask yourself, like, okay, I'm gonna do the guy every day. I'm gonna uh, on him, but like, will I play with his balls? Right. <laughs> Because you should do that. Of course you should. But so do I, I don't want to be forced to give a, 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 a lousy Hummer. I yeah, yeah, be, yeah. I want to, well, you should do, I want to excel you, at everything I try. You might want to practice. <laughs> you might want to practice before you get to prison so that you don't you know, get nervous. They can sense. That yeah, sounds like can. a come on to me. <laughs> yeah. Ken Kenny's asking rape, you for something Ken wants here. to rape Louie. Yeah, I think that's what we got going. All right, let's talk about this sexual little deviant thing. 20%, now the saying 10 to 20% of men now engaging in unsafe sex. Uh, because the risk of getting a disease turns them on, right? Now, what do you think? It, now, Dom, at this point, don't you think? Well, first of all, even safe sex can be unsafe at my age. I got to limber up first. You know what yes, I, mean? I know. I got to do some leg stretching. But I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Italian. I love these guys who get something and they can't believe they got it. Hey, she looked clean to me. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> The, the truth of the matter is, the reason, you know, uh, it, it's not about the risk or about it. The reason that men have unsafe sex is that it really does feel better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but they're know, saying there's like, actual bug chases. Didn't you read that whole yeah, about see, those people, AIDS bug I, chases? These guys no. drive me nuts that they, yeah. they're so picky about sex. Like, they want to wait till somebody that lets them do it. Like, I'm, I'm married, so we don't, we never have sex now because we have a baby. <laughs> Our baby's an asshole, so we're not allowed to have sex now. <laughs> so. I, I just makes me I, look. If I put twenty condoms and have sex with uh, Rhino, I would do it. <laughs> I'm gonna be picky. And also in the in I the straight f world, wife. <laughs> in, oh, yeah. how is she? In, she's great. Uh, in the straight world, I mean, what are the odds? Sleep with Louis's wife. That's uh, great. Yeah, because she doesn't want to have sex with him. He's always taking care of the baby. Uh, oh, go ahead. Well, in the yeah, straight we, world, we, what? Look, we're all doing her. Dude, don't flatter yourself. <laughs> but on the, oh. Hey man, I'm kidding. I, I, I don't. I never turn his wife. Okay. But, oh, well, now, what was I saying though? Now, what, in the straight I, I, world. In the straight oh yeah. Well, I mean, what are the odds? Yeah, the odds of getting AIDS are, are not as high as they once thought. And you know, if you get chlamydia or syphilis oh, or yeah. crabs, that's sort yeah, of the rites of fun. passage. Yeah, You're sort of like, fun. hey, I got crabs. Hey, yeah. right on. Good for you. Yeah. Welcome to the world of crabs. You know. And then, I mean, unless you're about to have sex, and the woman turns, you know, turns around and says, you know, put it in my. It's like my bisexual ex-boyfriend. I mean, the, the, the chances of you getting AIDS are, are low, I think. Yeah. And even, like, I mean, the Valtrex commercial actually looks like fun. You know, if you uh, What happens in Valtrex? No, what, what is it with you in <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Valtrex. Yeah, it's yeah, for herpes. Oh, oh, all right. All right. You get the canoe. You get herpes, you get the canoe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> You know, folks, a lot of TV and movie actors have been doing these Broadway musicals on pensive. Antonia and Melanie, Jason Alexander and the producers, John Stamos and Nine. What makes me mad is they would never ask me to do anything like that. I I'm from this city. You know what? I shouldn't say never. That's negativity. Could be, right? Who knows? <laughs> Could be. Who knows? 
there's something due any day I will know right away soon as it shows It may come cannibal and down to the sky Gleam his eye bright as a rose Who knows It's only just Gonna come through, come and do me. Could it be? Yes, it could. Something's coming, something good. If I can wait, something's coming. I don't know what it is, but it is gonna be great. With a click, with a shock, phone will jingle, door will knock, open the latch. Something's coming, don't know when, but it soon catch the moon. One handed <laughs> around the corner, or oh, whistling down the river. Come on, deliver to me. It's only just out of reach, down the block, on the beach, maybe tonight, maybe tonight, maybe tonight. It's just a fake too. Oh, the, um, oh, wow, scary. Folks, as we mentioned earlier today, more and more men experience emasculation as a constant humiliating problem. I myself emasculate five times this morning. <laughs> <laughs> men are reclaiming their masculinity by acting like mountain men and medieval knights. What's an easier way for today's fella to feel like a real man? Dom? How about stopping the crying in sports? Everybody's crying. Don Zimmer cried because Pedro tried to bowl his giant gerbil head. <laughs> Dick, 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 Dick Vermeil cries when he wins. Aaron Boone, cried. Aaron Boone cried because he and his $7 million contract got traded from the Reds to the Yanks. Act like a man and cry when it's important. Like when you spend a whole night and all your energy and money on some babe <laughs> and you still don't get any nasty snapper. What's up with that? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny. Thanks, uh, thanks Colin. Look, uh, wear a uniform. Men need to wear uniforms. You feel like a man in a uniform. Look at, look at how real men do. Baseball players, cops, firemen, the manliest of all men. Look at firemen. They all sleep together. They shower together. They play around in a giant pole all day. And you never hear, hey, that firehouse seems a little gay. Right? <laughs> That's why when I go out on a date, I wear my Jeter jersey and my McDonald's shift supervisor pants. <laughs> it covers all bases, man. Yeah, why not? All right, Mark. Well, the easiest way that I know to feel like a man is to make my girlfriend cry. <laughs> <laughs> my masculinity has nothing to do with dirt farming, jousting, or making horseshoes. My masculinity comes from intelligence and sensitivity. I'm not afraid to embrace my feminine side. I even have sex with it occasionally. <laughs> Just to show her who's boss. All right. Louis. I used to feel out of touch with my masculinity, and I used to doubt myself as a man until I did something that changed my life forever. That's right, I shaved my balls. 
Nothing has made me feel more liberated or more manly than having a nice, clean, hairless sack. <laughs> I actually heard somewhere that gay men like to shave each other's balls. I think straight men should embrace this. What better way to know each other as men, to feel like men, than to remove the stubble from one another's scrotal area? It also builds trust. Just imagine if before every peace summit, Yasser Arafat and Ariel Sharon squatted on the floor across from each other and shaved each other's big, hairy n our troubles there would be soon over. At least he's, he's got an idea, you know? Folks, that's our show. Good night. Take care of yourselves.